Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. <laughs> it's Luke again from Holistic Survival School. Hey guys, today I'm here to show you how to make some tarp shelters. With just two items, some cordage or some rope, and a nice tarp, we can make a nice, simple shelter that's going to keep us dry, it's going to keep us safe from the elements. Um, I know it may not look like much, you may be doubting it right now, but uh, I've spent a lot of nights uh, sleeping in these shelters and they've kept me dry and warm uh, from the snow and all the elements. So I'm going to show you how to make this, it'll be a good time. Alright guys, so like I said, we only need two items to make a good tarp shelter. One of them being cordage. Uh, this cordage that I'm using, and cordage is just another word for rope, um, it's this 3 millimeter P cord, or paracord. Um, it's super strong, super durable. Uh, I highly recommend it. Take a lot of it when you go into the wilderness. It's very handy. Uh, the other item, being a good sized tarp, is an 8 foot by 10 tarp, kind of a medium thickness. Uh, I like to go with the medium. Sometimes the thin ones can get a little bit too thin. The rain kind of seeps through it if they get wet. Okay, so with those two things, we're going to make a sweet shelter. Uh, I'm going to show you a few techniques on how to attach the cordage to the tree and how to attach the tarp to the cordage. Once you learn those basics, it's kind of like Legos. You can kind of channel your inner kid building those forts back in the day. You can make it any way you want. Um, so just learn how to connect these things. The two ways we're going to connect the tarp to the cordage. One of them is going to be called the gooseneck. The other one's going to be called the stick trick. So with those two techniques, you can make anything you want. Um, so the first technique, I'm going to take this uh, loop I've put in, just called a bite. If you need to look that up, uh, look that up on YouTube. It's how to make a bite. It's real simple. Okay, this permanent loop that's in my cordage. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find something that's a little bit above my head here. Nice sturdy branch. This doesn't have a lot of give to it so I can make my, my cordage line nice and tight. So I'm going to wrap this around like so. Leave my loop open. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed this cordage through the loop. I'm bring that all the way down. Okay, so I can tighten this. And no matter how hard I pull on that, that thing's not moving. That's a solid start. Okay? So now that we've got this secured on our anchor, okay, I'm going to tie this, I'm going to get this tarp connected to this cordage, okay? And there's a few techniques, like I said. The one way I'm going to show you is called the gooseneck, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find some of this juniper, these leaves here. I'm going to kind of break them off. I'm going to ball them up, create a little bit of a ball. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find the middle of my tarp, and I'm going to make this ball like so, okay? And I'll even twist it up a little bit. Basically what we want is a goose neck. We want something thin here and then thicker up top so the cordage can't slip over it. Okay? So now I can take this. And I'm gonna, there's a lot of different ways to tie it around. Um, right now I'm just gonna do a clove hitch. And I won't get into that right now. If you wanna see how to tie a clove hitch, I'm sure there's a million videos online right now. Go click away. Go learn how to do a clove hitch and then come back and watch the rest of this video. I'm going to tie that around and I'm going to tighten it. So after I've tied off the gooseneck with my clove hitch, I'm going to take the rest of that cordage. I'm going to get to the other end of my tarp. Feed it through. Now once again, I can, I can tie this anywhere I want, you know, on this, on this tarp. I can do a gooseneck anywhere, so I can go from one corner to the other. Ideally you want it to be kind of symmetrical. Uh, I'm going to be a little less symmetrical here so I can show you guys how to do the stick trick, okay? So with the stick trick, what I want to do first is I'm going to pull this cordage tight and I'm going to pull the tarp tight. So what I'm trying to do, once again, is connect this tarp to the cordage. Now if I let this tarp slide, I'm going to get this loose looking tarp. It's not going to be very good at repelling water. But ideally what I want when I pull it tight, you want it like that so the water will just run right off. So to do the stick trick, what we want to do is we always need a grommet. Grommets are these circles here. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this cordage tight, and I'm going to pull the tarp tight. And I say, all right, I want my tarp to connect to the cordage right there. So what I do is I kind of pull the tarp away, I mark the spot where I wanted it. What I'll do is I'll make a loop in the cordage, and I'll send that loop through the grommet, like so. Okay. I have the loop through the grommet, I take a stick, put the stick through it, I twist the stick twice at least. Okay, you see that now? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed that end of the stick through the bottom again. So I have a kind of another loop I've created. What that does is just allows the stick not to rotate. And then I'm going to pull down, and now I can pull the cordage tight and that tarp is tight too. Between the gooseneck and the stick trick, if you know how to do those two things, you can make your tarp look like any shape you want. Any size, any shape. 
So now all I have to do to finish this is to tie this loose end to another end. I could either tie it to the ground and make more like a uh, kind of a, a dart shaped um, shelter. I could tie it up high and kind of make it more of a classic A-frame look. Okay. So how I'm going to tie this was just like before I'm looking for a solid branch that doesn't have a lot of give because I want to tie this tight. Okay. So I can see in here a pretty solid branch in here. I'm going to reach in. Looking for the same thing. Something thick, something solid. It's not going to move much. So what I'm going to do now is I want this to be really tight because the tighter it is, the less it's going to be affected by rain, by snow, whatever elements we're working with. Okay. So now I'm going to create a slip knot to do a trucker stitch at the end to finish this shelter off. So with the trucker stitch, I'm going to fold the cordage back on itself. And I have a lot to work with here, so that's good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen it. I'm going to get the cordage here. I'm going to make a loop, like a loop-de-loop -loop roller coaster. Can you see that? Loop-de-loop -loop roller coaster. Then I'm going to fold this loop away from my tarp. If I fold it towards my tarp, I'm going to get really ugly knot. So I'm going away from the tarp, and as it lays down on the cordage, I'm going to pull this through and away from the tarp. Okay, what I've done is I've just created a slip knot. And what that's going to act like is this is going to act like a pulley. So now I can take the loose end of my cordage here, feed it through this loop, and now I can pull really tight. And I can get this shelter nice and tight. Little effort. Okay, it's nice and tight. So now to tie off to finish off a trucker hitch, if I let go here, obviously it's going to get loose again. So I pull it tight where I want it. So yeah, that's good enough. What I do is I pinch it like so. So now I'm holding on to that tightness. I'm not losing the tension. What I'm going to do is I'm going to loop this around, kind of make it almost like a four shape. And I'm going to tuck this through here and then through the loop and then go towards my fingers. The cool thing about a trucker's hitch is, is that I can just simply boop, pull that loose and it's loose again. So once again, pull it tight, pinch it with my fingers, make a four shape. I'm going to tuck this into that loop of the four, keep it as a loop, and I'm going to pull it towards my fingers. Just like that, holds tight. So now that we got our ridge line tied up tight, all we have to do is tie off the four corners. That just gives us more security, uh, more strength from the wind, make sure that rain rolls off nice and easy if it does happen to rain us at night. So I'm gonna take this corner here, and I'm just gonna tie it off to something heavy. Uh, it can be a log, I have a rock here. Uh, it doesn't really matter, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. Sometimes low shrubs, you can tie it off to those. So once again, I'm gonna do the trucker hitch. It's an easy knot to tie loop away from the tarp feed this back through pinch it make a four loop through into it towards your fingers so I can rearrange the rock where I want it there we go there's one corner ready to go there we go so we got our one side here that's done. Uh, it kind of has that tent-like look, so hopefully, you know, the rain comes down. It's gonna wash right off. Um, since it is summertime right now, I've kind of given us some space. It's not touching the ground. You totally could make this touch the ground if we just bring our ridge line a little bit lower. The reason I, I like a little bit of airflow on one side, it just gets hot in the shelter sometimes. We're in Utah, it's July, um, so a little bit of breeze coming in. You know, it, it's nice and cooling at night. So I'll leave it a little high on one side. The other side, I'll tend to have it touch all the way to the ground. Well, here's the finished product, guys. I got all four corners tied off. Um, it may not be much. It's very simple, but it's going to keep me dry. This is a, an awesome shelter for at least two people. It's more of a summertime shelter. It's going to keep the airflow out. If you wanted to create a winter shelter, I would recommend doing it a little bit lower to the ground, more enclosed. Um, but, you know, like I said earlier, as long as you learn the gooseneck and the stick trick and a few knots, uh, you can create anything you want with these shelters. I've seen some pretty cool ones. So maybe next time you go camping, don't bring the tent. Leave the tent at home. Just bring a tarp and some cordage. Uh, let me see what you make.